Hello, thank you for joining my demonstration. I'm going to show you in this demonstration how I go about setting up a composition for my uh, still life painting and um, what materials and equipment I use. So first of all, I'm going to start with the paper, which is Saunders Waterford High White 300 pound paper, like a board actually, and it has a rough surface, which I like because as you paint across it, because of the tooth on the paper, it skips across it and leaves little white, what I call sparkles, which I think keeps the painting alive and fresh. So there's my paper. And next, my brush, a Rosemary & Co. Series 33, which is the top of the range Kalinsky Sable um, brush. It's a number 10, size 10. Uh, and it's like several brushes in one for me. I just dip it in water and show you that it's got a lovely belly, keeps its shape, lovely belly for when I want a reasonable, a good amount of paint, and this lovely tip for when I want to do some finer painting. So a brilliant brush, uh, Rosemary & Co. And for the price, you know, you, you couldn't do better. And, you know, I'm quite rough with them. I, I, I'm mixing. I don't have a special brush for mixing. I mix with the same brush and they do last me quite a while. So there's my brush. I also have a um, piece of absorbent cloth, which is lint free. And just to take off any excess uh, water that I don't want. My palette is a white plate just a, an ordinary cheap white dinner plate where I put out my paints around the outside and mix in the middle. When I say put out my paints, that's because I use in the main um, tubes of paint. And here is a Winsor & Newton um, artist quality that I have, or more and more I'm using Daniel Smith paints. They are expensive, but they, you know, watercolour paint does go a long way. And the colours, you know, if you use the um, the granulating ones, the, the colours are just amazing when they dry and separate out into, uh, oh, just yummy, yummy colours. And then sometimes I'll, I'll use these as well. This is a White Knights um, palette. Just, it was a basic range which I took out, a uh, basic range of colours and replaced with colours that I found that I was using quite a lot rather than having a, a big a big palette. So they are very, very reasonable, or to the point I'd say cheap, uh, but the quality is not affected. They, they have a, a really strong pigment um, content and the colours are accessible by which I mean you know they don't dry out you can you can wet your brush and get rich color straight away even if you've not used them for a while so white nights and then some uh, watercolor media that I use these are um, Stabilo pencil um, crayons children's crayons actually but they are waxy and water soluble and great for mark making Alongside those I have Caran d'Ache um, Neocolor 2. Um, do the same thing as the St Stabilo ones, but the colour range is much more extensive, so obviously more choice. And then for Mark, oh yes, before I go on to those, a, a good set of um, watercolour pencils. Um, I've got a good range of those, you know, and, and they, they are useful for, I don't use them ever, all the time, but just occasionally um, I'll find, oh, I need to use use the pencil to do that if I want a fine line or, or if I want some texture, I'll great rub the, uh, the crayon along the sandpaper, a coarse bit of sandpaper to into wet paint, which creates a nice texture. And then some mark making equipment, um, a bamboo stick, which I've chiseled at that end. And this end has got the, the characteristic hole through the middle, great for stamping. Um, 
into paint or or with paint or with um, masking fluid to create some marks or pattern and a stick from the garden for Scythia stick which is dried out and I've shaped to a point. Um, I use a ruling pen if I'm applying masking fluid, um, easy to clean, I can vary the type of mark. I, I find this quite easy to draw with as well and the masking fluid I use if I have to use it, I say have to use it because I don't really like it, I don't like the edges it creates, it's too hard, so whenever I do use it I'll try and disguise it afterwards by painting back into it. But it does has, have its uses and I think the best thing to say is don't over overdo it. Um, so this is a Pabeo one, I like it because the colour is looks, I think, you can see it better and the consistency is good. So that's it, that's what I'm going to be using or most of it and uh, um, I'm going to go into the garden now and pick some subjects. See you soon. So I've picked from the garden um, some Cosmos, white and a few pink ones and some Verbena and some Japanese anemones, white ones. Um, some of my favourite flowers they are and looked then for, for suitable containers to put them in. I do like a jug because I do like the, the handles and the space in those handles so I do tend to favour a jug but uh, I don't know yet. Um, I've got to see what suits the flowers best but having brought them in um, I'm able to make a decision uh, if you've got nothing in front of you, it's really difficult to make a decision. So, well, it is for me. So this is an informed decision because I've got uh, possible subjects in front of me. And now, having thought that I'll be painting the cosmos, um, I'm going to discard those and I'm going to favour the Japanese anemones because I think they just look absolutely lovely in this little jug, one of my favourite little jugs that I've used a lot in my paintings. I just love the pattern on it, I love the shape of it and it's got a handle so I can do something in there. So the other possibilities were this one which is the same um, but I just feel that the colours on this one um, suit the anemones better. So put those to one side. And the next job for me is to find suitable inspiration. I say inspiration because what I have in front of me won't necessarily appear like that in the painting. So it's inspiration or information for me to use in my painting. So I have actually sorted out already um, suitable or possibilities for inclusion in the background. You see I've got a multitude of patterns, colours here. So I'm going to play around with those, play around with um, what eye level I, uh, you know, level I want to view my subject at. So uh, I'm going to get on with that now and, um, and hopefully come up with a uh, something nearer to be able to start a composition. So I've raised my um, flowers and jug on a plinth to give me, a, I think, a better view of it. And from the uh, fabrics and papers that I got out, I've actually decided on these for now. Um, but I've kept these um, because I'm not so sure um, that I might not want to include them, change them or, you know, add little bits of those colours. I, I think they're quite good. Uh, so I'm going to put them to one side um, so they're in my mind's eye and, you know, I might think, oh, you know, a little bit of that colour would be good. This one, 
not sure about, I um, picked it out because of the, the colours in here. I know this background colour isn't right, but I can change that, that's not a problem. Um, it might be too big, I like the, um, the pattern might be too big, I mean, I like the, the proportion of the, the, and the scale, I mean, of the uh, marks on this uh, with the marks on the jug, and I think that might just be enough pattern. Anyway, um, I, I just put them down like that. It's um, something that I can move around, change. I'm not sure exactly how, how I would use these, this background at this stage. It's too early for me to tell, but it's information. Information for me to use, select from, uh, as and when and if I need it. So it's a movable feast. I like to think that the painting talks to me and tells me what it needs by looking at the shapes that I've created and the composition um, that's there already. And you know, it's, it's, it's informed decisions all the time. Like I said earlier, unless there's something there, you can't move on and make, make a decision of which way to go. Do I go this way, that way, that way? And uh, you, you need the information there to be able to do that. And that's why I don't draw it out. I don't, because then it, can become a bit of a filling in exercise. So the colours um, that we're going to use for this painting. Um, I've got here New Gamboge, Windsor and Newton, Serpentine Green, um, Daniel Smith, another Daniel Smith, Moon Glow, and another Daniel Smith, Mayan Blue. Now, for the main part, I'm going to use for the flowers, that is, the white petals, I'm going to use the Moon Glow, but I'm going to mix some of these other colours into it as well. So let's just show you what the Moon Glow is. It's quite dark, but we do need some darks. You know, even white flowers have very dark areas, but it just comes out and splits into nice, nice colours. So I might, oh, let, I'll just show you the other colours. This is serpentine green lovely lovely green and new gamboge it could be for the um, the stamen of the white anemones and then a mayan blue lovely gorgeous blue again the daniel smith one and Going back to the moon glow, then I might, well I will, be mixing other colours into it just to change the, the hue a little bit. So for it's quite a blue there, do another one with a bit of green in, get a quite a nice soft green. And uh, might even it'll probably be similar, probably go a bit muddy this one. Uh, quite different. But the the green and the moon glow make a nice olive colour. There. So what I've done is I've I've just used uh, just gone for the colours that I feel work, will work, uh, just need a bit of playing around with them but uh, you know uh, I might need to find another colour but I thought that might may and blue was quite good for the um, the jug as well because it's not a million miles away from it and uh, I like, just like to keep harmony in the painting and the green, the serpentine green isn't far from the paper that I've chosen that the jug's standing on um, but with some adjustments and I might you know need to introduce um, another colour, I don't know, I'll see how it goes. I'm looking, I've, I've moved the jug and I'm looking at the backs of the petals now and there is a warmth there that, um, so I do need to include a red or pink of, of some description and I think I'm going to go for 
um, a perylene violet, Windsor and Newton. Let's just have a look at that and nice soft pink yes yes that's needed so um, I do have my uh, three primaries here blue yellow and a red which is basically how I like to work uh, I've been using a lot of moon glow and it has got a lot of um, red already in it but if I do see the underside of the petals then I'll need that and uh, so that's why I've included it. Always a good idea to do this before you start your painting um, because it familiarises you with your subject and you start to learn and understand a lot more about it. Okay, so I'm going to start by drawing very lightly, um, not in great detail, just so I can start painting. It's I always need to draw first um, with white flowers because I need to differentiate between the flower and the white background just in case I need to leave some white ground. So some pencil work to begin with but I'm only going to start, I only start with one flower and deal with one at a time usually. This one and try and start with something I really like. So this one do I want it in the middle of the paper or do I want it on the outs on the towards the right hand side? I'm just trying to decide. So I'm just tracing with my pencil what's there. Have I got enough room? Um, and have I got enough room for that one? Because I really like the way that there's a stem here that branches right out here. And petals on one that are just hanging on, so I've got to be pretty quick. So yeah I'm going to start with that and so here's this the center and just mark where um, the stamen come round and then the petal This is only a guide because I shall continue to draw with my paintbrush. Lovely gap there, so to make sure I leave that. Could be just slightly bigger. This is probably a bit too. Just take the edge off that's a bit too big, I think. So there we go. There's and I just want to make sure that the stem, yeah, there's the stem coming down there. Make sure this actually relates to that arm. There's another petal that I've just seen. That'll do, that'll do. So that's all I do to start with. Don't draw the whole thing out because um, things move, flowers in particular move, and uh, unless you're working from artificial ones or a photograph, but you know, they, they move and it's, it's quite annoying if you've drawn it all out and uh, uh, and the less things have moved position, um, which is inevitable. So I'm going to start by um, putting in that green center. So here we are. It's 
it's um, I'm going to make it a little bit darker around the edges by putting some moon glow at the base while that's still wet. And just a lighter green at the top, a bit of water on there. Leave that a minute and while that's doing its thing I'm just going to go in with the, the moon glow don't want again don't want too much detail in there I can see a little bit it's amazing what you do start to see um, once you start painting. Just wash that through. There's a bit of a shadow <coughs> down there, so... Oops. Just ease that into there. And coming over to this side. Um, there's a very, I think I've missed the petal out, uh, da -da 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 -da. yeah, just, just here, I, just underneath, oh. it's important that because that's quite dark underneath, so I'm going to use that dark and I can see green, so I'm going to start with the um, serpentine green, just there, and then put the the other colour, the moon glow, on top. And I need to make it quite dark, actually. And again, very dark underneath. Don't be afraid to go dark um, on your white flowers because you need those contrasts. It, doesn't, it just means that you probably have less dark, more light than you would on something that's, that's darker, but it still needs those tonal uh, values to make sense and to make it look three-dimensional. Green again, just want to introduce a bit there. I'm just going to grab a bit of kitchen paper just to probably made that a little bit too wet. I'm just going to soak that up a little bit and while it's wet I'm going to put on some some crayon so I'm just going to lay that over really carefully uh, I'm a bit impatient so I, I can't wait I can't wait give a bit of texture. So I'm using two crayons here. Blow it off. Oops, what have I done? That's okay. Right, so we've got that lovely, lovely texture in there. Um, okay, so back to the petals. Uh, again, a dark one here. So I'm just going to go in with
I'm starting to see other other colours in there. A bit of green. Darker green. And then slightly bluer. So I'm going to use that Mayan, Mayan blue. And there's a bit of green in there. Yeah. And then coming round to this petal here, it's quite green actually, quite bright. Once you start mixing, you often find the colours already on your plate, you know, that uh, well, I do. I only want an impression of the flowers, you know, I don't want a laboured um, look. seeing a change in tone and hue so I'm going to put that in I'm just using some water to bring it out to the edge and this one here it's only sort of very subtle um, colours in here. Very, so I'm hardly going to put anything on that one. And that's important as well in terms of your composition. Um, you know, not to give everything the same level of treatment. I'm just indicating here the little notch in that because if I were to put a background around the, uh, in this and go up that far, I want to be able to see that edge. I've gone a bit too far actually with that. And I'll just alter this a little bit now. I'm being a little bit more careful with what I'm doing. So you can see now that that's well defined and I can come back to that later. Right, so going back to this this petal here, uh, I want some green in there. It's a nice bluey green there, and I'm just going to change that. Go back to the moon glow for my shadow and also to define this petal that is I didn't really want that to happen so I'm just going to block that just define this petal you now if you make a mistake just go with it you know you don't think oh don't get in the doldrums about it it it, it happens and usually it looks worse than it actually is and once in once you've actually done the painting you hardly notice it so just deal with it I 
can just see a touch of pink in there and this will help. I'm just going to put it in because it will, believe it or not, help if I introduce pink. You know, I talked about the back of the, the petals, so that will that will help. Um, now, I'm to squint. The petal is turned over here, and so I'm. It just needs. It's a funny colour, actually. So I'm, I'm basically going to mix some red, some of the perylene violet. Oh, far too much perylene violet. Take a bit of that with some gamboge and some blue. Make a very neutral colour. Try it out. Yep. So I'm just going to make it a bit weaker. And while that's wet, I'm going to, it's got an edge to it because the, it's going past its best. So it's a bit brown on the edge and I like things like that, you know, I think they're, they're important. So I'm just going to look for one of my crayons so that I can put, it's quite a warm ochre colour. Where are you? Is that it or is that gold? I think that's it's a bit warmer than that maybe. It's finding the right colour. That's, ah. Yeah, that's better. So I'm just going to touch the edge of that. So if you recall, I was uh, saying earlier on about drawing, not drawing it all out and my subject out. And, you know, I mean, I, I've, I've returned to this and of course the flowers have moved because I've got the heating on, there's lights on in the studio. And so, you know, it would have been very frustrating. The flowers have turned and so, and I did actually have to erase one of them, this one here. Um, because it's 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 actually gone to quite a nice angle, and I'm I'm looking at this one that I did first of all. Its petals have really dropped down. It's almost like a, a ballerina. It's it's gorgeous, and it will be of course losing its petals soon. But sometimes, you know, when things change, like like they are doing, and they're bound to do, then I'll. I'll use that if I think, oh, well, that's so lovely. I'll use it in another part of the painting. But for the moment, I'm just, I'm just going to finish this flower and uh, I put the stem in on that and uh, then we'll have another look at it. So I'm just going to put the, this, I don't know, it should be dry enough now. So I'm just going to put some yellow round here here and then I'll go in um, with um, the Neo colour. You probably saw me do that before. But I'm just putting this base of a, a there's a sort of orangey, but I'm just putting this base down first of the new gamboge and then going in with um, the crayon. Just 
trying to emulate the the groupings of these. I don't want them evenly spaced because they're not. Um, because mainly because of the angle that they're, they're showing at. So I think uh, that's that's enough for that. So I'm just going to come and finish this stem off. Now I tend to overlap the stems. Um, it's that nice olivey colour. Rather than trying to paint round them, I'm just looking at the angle of this one. So coming down. I've got to make sure it's going to come into the jug here. There are some leaves there that I might use. Just a bit of water on that to get that paler. That's nice. That's nice. But I'm just going to dab that off a little bit. There. Because I might put some leaves in there. And there's a little um, bud coming out here. So going to put that in. In fact, it's quite red. The stem is. So, you know, being led by what I see, Got a bit thick there, maybe, hopefully, I can tidy that up when I put some background in. Actually, I'm just going to just get rid of it before it dries and just have another go. Let's start off with some, some green. Over there, that stem, and so the light's falling on top of it. Then I'm just going to, um, sorry if my head keeps getting in the way, just paint over it there. And I have introduced another colour, and I didn't tell you. Um, you know, just like I said earlier, sometimes you just find that you need something else so again it's a daniel smith color and it's it's just something else this is green appetite genuine green appetite genuine and this really does i've used it here and here and it really does actually split into lovely colours. I don't mind that that's wet, that stem, but I don't mind that actually going into that. Quite dark, it's behind this one, so. Just make that a better shape. There. Now I have to decide, have I got enough in there? I'm going to um, talk about the composition a little bit. Um, 
as you can see that I've just indicated where the jug's going that was really more to do with helping me with the um, excuse me the stems going ensuring that they're going into the the jug so I'm happy with that I'm also happy that it's to one side that the jug isn't in the middle again I find that if, if you tr draw the whole thing out first of all um, then the tendency is to put the container in the middle but because I've got this line here and things are moving over that side I wanted space for for this area and it that will be balanced by the handle that I put here um, so there's more going on in the flowers here but hopefully there'll be more going on here in the background that I'm going to use again I haven't quite um, come to a final decision on that but it's getting nearer I'm getting to understand what I want to do a lot more and although one this flower now has actually turned this way as I'm looking at the arrangement and taking up um, interrupting the handle I will actually move that flower so I can draw the handle because that's how my flower is here so I'm just going to have a look to see um, what else I need to do if I want to put any more flowers in I've got a feeling I don't actually I, f I just feel that it's probably enough but I might just go and pick some leaves from the from the plant uh, and put those in but there are some leaves there so I'm just going to give that a little bit of a thought so if you recall um, I was talking about um, adding some leaves and I decided not to go for the larger leaves because it wouldn't look natural with these sort of flowers so I just looked around what I got and put some little leaves in amongst here just to break these areas up and I might just I'll, I'll wait but I might just pop some more in uh, when that's dry so I can just overlap them so you can see I've drawn out the jug uh, with its lovely stripes and I've just started to paint it because <laughs> I inevitably get the stripes mixed up so um, I've made a start so I could really concentrate and um, what I've got is a May May the Mayen blue and just popping a little bit of the um, moon glow into that for to give it some depth so I'm just going to carry on and with that and what I'm doing is um, just popping in I don't know whether you can see here um, some of the decoration that's on the jug uh, being careful to not follow every every spot exactly but just to again like like I was doing for the stamen just being aware of the arrangement not just haphazardly going or just going dot 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 you know just looking at the movement of the pattern and the uh, size of the dots just to give that lovely variation and do it justice so the Mayan blue Need some more, it's, uh, it's disappeared. Put some more on my plate. There. 
bit at the bottom. Uh, and then I go with the crayons. Not very obvious, this, but like I say, it's just going to come down the side of this. Just a quick way of doing it. See what happens this side again. Going to come inside, collide with that. Just about to finish that off. You'll see um, better when I put the, the dots in on the lighter part, lighter stripes. Just make it a bit lighter on the top where it's catching the light as it curves over So this crayon, this is uh, one of the Stabilo ones, the chunky one. Um, so I'm, I'm applying it into the wet paint. Okay, a bit of, just make it a little bit darker. Um, there, but a much lighter at the top. see much happening. I can see something there. I'm only doing what I can see. Not to, unless it helps by including. Uh, if, it, if it helps then I'll put it in. But uh, otherwise paint what you see, draw what you see, not what you think you see. But uh, you know you need to Use your discretion and uh, right. I think this is the last one. Just checking to see what happens at the top. I want to tip that round so that. Moon glow into that gives it a nice blend so nicely together. I'm just being guided by the the light that's falling on this.
there's just a bit of a dark bit on the edge which I want to put in. Going down to the handle. light on the top there so I'm just trying to leave that if I do cover it up then I can always I, I just come back and scratch it out back to the, the paper but I uh, prefer to do it this way if I can a bit and just dip it out a little bit I come back and sort the rest of this out When it's dry. Interesting how purpley that looks. So this is the perfect, perfect, perfect colour for this. Rather than the blue, strangely. sort that out a little bit more okay so now to the um, I forgot to put any things in there but you know I can hardly make them out so I'm not going to bother um, now to the the lighter parts and they are not um, white they read as white um, but when you look closely and I think why it's too stark at the moment so I'm just going to knock that back a little bit and make a, a neutral colour from the blue, the pink that I've got and the yellow. So I, I just do end up with a, a neutral colour that needs more yellow in it. Now it needs a touch more red. I'm just trying it out on the on the side of my plate. I'm sorry, on the side of on my paper. Yeah, it needs to be a lot more liquidy than that. Not really into it, so I'll just move that. Got paler. Right. Let's I keep going green. Yeah, this is quite greeny. So I'm just going to go down here and hopefully leave some white. Um, but while it's wet, I do want to put these in.
don't mind if it picks up a bit of the blue. is with this you get a nice soft edge where it fuses with the um, the wet paint change the colour slightly here I think it's um looks different so I'll just wash that through with some water and again off we go such fun Last one. Oops. Throw my equipment everywhere. I come from a family of clumsy people. Would you believe it? see anything on there because the maker didn't put anything on there but what I can make out is that it's a little bit darker so I'm just going to drop some darker colour in there and likewise there. Just put that in preparation. So there you go. This isn't quite dry yet, so I do need to be patient with that. But I can just see um, a sort of warm 
underneath of the, the clay. So I've got um, a mix of the perylene violet and the gamboge. So I'm just going to pop that under there. Let that run into there, I don't mind that. And then that edge will be tidied up. I'll just, when I put some background, well, background in and the shadow and so on. So you can see that I've uh, added a few more leaves here and um, painted the inside of the, the jug. To, to give some depth to it. Didn't want it. It's quite a warm colour that's in there, but I, I was a bit afraid of it um, coming forward too much if I made it too warm. So it's quite dark, I think that helps. I've also um, gone back over some of these stems, sorted them out to make sure that um, they are going to the edges of the jug. And I've also, painted in here as you can see because I can't resist that. I, that that's just an invitation for me um, and I, I did decide that having looked at this for a long time that these were the colours and if you remember that I I decided on uh, before I started the painting and uh, I'm still happy with those uh, I have looked at others but I've, I've come back come back to these and uh, particularly like this injection of of turquoise in the painting and I think they look a treat together. So I've mixed that colour using uh, New Gamboge and the um, Serpentine Green, added a little bit of um, the Moon Glow just to neutralise the colour, I didn't want it very garish and um, just painted the inside of that. that helps me that to say yes that's right that's great and then gives me the impetus to to carry on um i don't know i think um i'm going to i want to define these petals here i don't want to go too near this yellow i don't think um but it'll mainly be on this side and hopefully a little bit on on here as well Yes, so these are shapes here. There's no escape route here. So I call these uh, closed shapes or safe places, and uh, safe shapes, because there's no escape. So here's another one, here's another one, um, here's another one, and another one, and another one there. Uh, so that, that helps me uh, with placing the colour. Also, you, I don't know whether you can see, but I've put some uh, masking tape around here. I decided with the help of um, this old mount of where I wanted my picture plane to be. I was hoping for a square, but I find if I draw that out Initially, it sort of inhibits me, so I, I don't like to do that. I may come up a little bit from the bottom, but you know, I, that's not a problem. I can do that if I want. So I've, for the purposes of this demonstration, I have masked um, a centimetre away from that, which gives enough room for a mount to go on it. So I'm going to carry on with um, with doing the background and uh, let's see what happens.
And finally, um, I'm going to put in the shadow. I did mention earlier that I could see green as the light's changed a bit now, but I'm still, it is a very dark green shadow. I'm going to mix a bit of that in it. So the green appetite shadow, uh, for a shadow, just, I think I want it darker actually. And I think I'm going to um, put in some of the moon glow as well. Um, it's got to find it. I've run out. Oh, yeah. Just to get some depth into it. So much happier now and all it needs now is shadow underneath the jug and it's a nice shadow being cast so I'm going to put a strong this comes to about there And I'm just going to wash that through. Just catching the edge so it gives a nice soft edge. There, done. So here's the finished painting. Um, which I'm much happier with now. Now that um, I've got this dark ground here, which throws up the the white flowers beautifully, uh, but I also like the contrast of of this one here merging with the white background. I have used the information that was in front of me, but as I said earlier, I've adjusted it to suit what the painting needed. So. Thank you for watching and happy painting.